Resume Reader, Croissant. And today I will be reading to you from Broken Crayons by Miklaron. Now, before we get into this chapter, there is a warning from the author saying that some scenes will contain torture, murder, enslavement, and sad moments. And I, as well as the author, will recommend that you skip the portion timestamped in the description if you are sensitive to those topics. So continue on when it hits those timestamps at your own risk. Thank you. Now, on to Chapter 7, Sleepover Part 2. Russia's Point of View I could hear the Russian Empire choking. That bastard had children and didn't tell me? Wait, does that mean... He paused. I'm your grandfather? He asked happily, and the others looked shocked hearing everything. Ukraine smiled so brightly, and for once, I smiled too. I guess so, I said. Do you know what that means? exclaimed Ukraine, and I nodded. Do you have any siblings? asked Russian Empire. Yes, we were fifteen kids. I could hear him choking again. Wait, what do you mean, were? he asked, and the others looked as confused as he was. Ukraine's smile faded, and so did mine. My younger sister, Ukraine, is here with me, but the rest... I froze, and Ukraine looked down, no longer happy. They're dead, too, I said. The others gasped, and Russian Empire fell silent. I discover I have fifteen grandchildren, then discover thirteen of them are dead. I have fought plenty of wars and battles, but this shit hurts. He said quietly, and I agreed. Hey, um, I, I'll call you later, I asked, and he paused for a second, still processing what I just informed him of. Yes, yes, wouldn't want to waste your time, he said. We said our goodbyes, and for now, I hung up and gave the phone back to Germany, who was shocked, as they all were. Um, Russia, asked South Korea. You, you said your father and your siblings were, um, d dead, he continued, stuttering. We, um, we need some explanations, he said, and the others nodded. I suppose you do, but it's better if you don't know, for your own good. Oh, come on, it can't be that bad, said North Korea confidently. Oh, trust me, it is, I said coldly, and by my tone, he realized I wasn't joking. We still want to know Russia, said America, and I couldn't argue. Fine, but don't say I didn't warn you. I told him the time and place he needed to look for, and he displayed the memory from eight years ago, when I was ten. Nobody's point of view. The memory revealed a small wooden cabin in a big snowy forest with a lake nearby. The cabin's door opened and two young boys stepped out, smiling. The taller one of them held a weapon that seemed to be a hunting rifle. The taller one is me, and the other is my little brother, Kazakhstan. Russia explained in the present. Promise you'll be all right said a man from inside the house. And that's our father. Of course! They both said and waved goodbye as they walked into the forest. We were on our first hunting mission. Our father always took us hunting since we were too bored to buy food. But it was a little hard because we had younger siblings back at home. However, we managed. 
After a while of walking, they reached a part deep in the forest enough to have wild animals. The younger boy pointed at his ear. Can we eat that? He asked his brother. I suppose. Here, you kill it, he said and handed him the rifle. Their father taught them how to shoot with it properly, but Kazakhstan still struggled a bit. Here, I'll help you, said younger Russia, and showed him how to hold it properly. He shot, and the deer fell to the ground. Kazakhstan jumped happily, and Russia congratulated him. They high-fived and laughed. Dad will be so proud of us, said Kazakhstan, and they both smiled. Come on, this thing won't move itself, said Russia, and they carried the corpse back to their cabin, not knowing they were being followed. Risky! Kaz, you're back! exclaimed a young girl. That's Melrose. She's our sister, too. Look, we brought a deer, said Kazakhstan in excitement, and their father smiled. I knew I could trust you boys, he said. Oh, but they also brought home something else, too, said an unknown voice from the shadows of the forest. A male with a red flag stepped out of the shadows with a smirk. The children hid behind their dad as his face was somewhere in between anger and shock. Third Reich, what are you doing here? He said, this time clearly angry. Who, me? I'm just here to chat, said the Nazi with a smile as a few other men who seemed to be hunters emerged from the shadows. The Soviet man, their father, walked closer to him, telling his kids to stay back. What do you really want? He asked coldly, not wanting to deal with him. You know I always like a small fight, Soviet, he said, still smiling like they were old friends. Soviet sighed, and without warning, he kicked him to the snowy ground. Oh, but I didn't say what weapons we were going to use, said Third Reich. I don't have any weapons on me, said the Soviet coldly. Maybe you don't, he said, and put his hand to his pocket. But I do, he stated and got up. Soviet finally realized what he was doing when a gunshot was heard, and he fell to the ground, soaking the snow red. The children, who watched everything, screamed in horror. Russia ran up to his father's body, sobbing. No, no, no. He cried and silently begged for his dad to wake up. Grab them, all of them, said the Nazi with a victorious grin. The memory slowly faded and a new one appeared, which seemed to be a few hours later. The younger children hid behind their big brother, who spread his wings to shield them. The Nazi and his allies were laughing at the sight. Ah, are you protecting your little siblings? How adorable! They mocked them, and Russia glared at them in response. Now, now, you know I find it quite annoying to do house chores, said Third Reich. And I thought, he continued, I have fifteen children here who could do it for me. He smiled. That's enslavement, and it's illegal, said Russia coldly. One, I just killed your father. That's illegal, too. Two, what the heck did he teach you kids? Said the Third Reich in confusion. Anyhow, I also found this cool thing in the basement, and I wanted to test it out. He said, and one of his assistants brought a long weapon. The Nazi took it and turned it on. Sparks of electricity started to be created as he looked at it, awestruck. Don't you think this is beautiful? I bet it hurts a lot, too. He grinned, and the children trembled in fear. Some were crying, all except Russia. I'm not scared of you, 
he stated confidently. Oh, but you should be, said Third Reich and pointed the weapon towards him. Would you like to be first? He asked, and Russia glared at him, not showing fear. I'll take that as a yes. He put the weapon to Russia's neck and pressed it in. Russia screamed by the sudden pain spreading across his face. Kazakhstan took a step forward, trying to help him, but Ukraine stopped him. She knew he would meet the same fate if he did. Soon, the torture stopped, and Russia fell to the ground, crying. The men were laughing. "'Are you scared now?' asked Third Reich, still laughing. "'No,' Russia said, no longer crying. "'Excuse me,' said the Third Reich, and looked at the young boy. "'I'm not scared of you,' answered Russia, still with his face down. Third Reich growled. "'Fine, then. You will be.' The memory faded again, and then switched with one that seemed to be from years later. Fifteen children were down to four. Kazakhstan, Belarus, Ukraine, and Russia. The rest were murdered in some brutal way or starved. Today was the day most kids wait for in excitement, but Russia forgot all about it. Happy birthday, Ruski! said the three to their older brother, who sat and looked at the window with a view of the winter landscape. He turned to them with an empty look. It's my birthday? You guys remembered? He asked, confused. Of course! Bummer is, we don't have any presents, said Kazakhstan. Oh, don't worry, I have one said a voice, and a gunshot was heard. Kazakhstan fell to the ground, bleeding from a wound in his chest. Belarus and Ukraine screamed. Do you like it? asked the voice. No surprise, it was Third Reich. Russia ran over to his dying brother, holding him in his arms. Kaz, stay with me, he cried, holding back tears. Ruski, my back, it hurts, Kazakhstan murmured. Shh, it's okay, Russia shushed him. Remember what Dad always said? He asked, and his brother tried to think. He said, pain is like a person. If you ignore it long enough, it will go away, he said, and smiled weakly. You'll survive, and people will respect you. Like, we'll be soldiers, like you always said. We'll fight side by side. Russia's voice broke. You're right, said Kazakhstan quietly. I can't wait. His voice trailed off, and he fell from Russia's hands to the cold floor. Deceased. You, said Russia to Third Reich coldly without looking at him. You're enjoying this, aren't you? He asked, glaring at him, staring him with a dead look. Third Reich laughed. Of course I am. Why would I do this if I weren't? Once again, the memory faded, and another came in a year later. Wake up! shouted one of Third Reich's assistants. The three children, Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine, stood in a line in the hall of the back of the mansion they were tortured in for those five years, wondering what they're going to suffer today. Well, you know your jobs. Go do them, shouted a different man. Ukraine and Belarus rushed to their positions to do their chores, but Russia froze. No, he said. And the man sighed and called his boss. What is the problem? asked the Nazi. It's that rebellious kid again, sir, said the man. Oh, I can see. I'll take care of it, said Third Reich, and the man nodded and walked away.
Listen here, you little shit. You'd better behave, since I have two more little victims. He said and turned to Russia. You wouldn't there, said Russia. Oh, I would. Now, go do your job. Ha! I'd rather have my arm cut off, exclaimed Russia. All right, then. Cutting someone's arm off has always been my dream ever since I was a child, smiled Third Reich, and he called one of his assistants and whispered something into his ear. After a couple minutes, he came back with a chainsaw. Russia regretted saying that. And soon enough, the floor was covered with his blood, and his arm laid on the ground, no longer attached to his body. Ukraine and Belarus, who were watching, screamed in horror. Russia didn't cry. He didn't scream. He kept his head down, and then looked at Third Reich in the eyes with the most expressionless and dead way. And then he smiled. Did you enjoy that? He asked calmly, still smiling. For once, Third Reich was the one horrified. What? asked Russia. Did you think I'd cry, scream, shout for help, try to attack you? He laughed. Are you trying to kill me slowly? Bitch, I'm already dead. He continued laughing. All right, then said Third Reich, and shot Belarus. Ukraine screamed again. And still, Russia didn't even look over there. He kept smiling and laughing. The Nazi got angry and cut Russia's wing off, too. But he still laughed. Suddenly, they heard a knock on the door. Who is it? shouted Third Reich to the door. Knock, knock. It's the police, said a male voice. And dozens of cops burst through the door. Some of the cops ran up to the Third Reich and his assistants to arrest them. Others went around the mansion to make sure nobody and nothing bad was there. What? You have no right to arrest me. Then who did this? Said the cop that pointed to knocked out Russia. You don't have any proof. It's us. All right, then. Who is it? Asked the cop. Before he could make up a lie, the two cops came up running to them. Sir, we found something quite disturbing, said a female cop. What is it? It's, it's the basement. What's in it? All kinds of torture tools and... And what? Bodies, sir. Thirteen. All seem to be children. What? exclaimed the cop and turned back to Third Reich, glaring at him. You two! He called the two cops and told them to take Nazi back to their police car. And the rest of you, do the same. After all the hunters were arrested, he turned to Russia and Ukraine, who was holding him. What happened here? He asked them, and Ukraine explained. The cop's face turned horrified, and more so with every sentence. We'll take care of you two, and give your family a proper funeral, he said sadly. Um, sir? asked Ukraine. What's your name? You can call me that, though, he said. Who? He called out, and a woman that looked like a nurse came over. Please take care of this poor child, he said, and she gasped when she saw Russia. She turned around and called some other cops and medics so that they could take him to the hospital. Slowly, the memory faded. This time, it was replaced by everyone's terrified faces. They all looked at Russia as he laughed. And to think you all called me the monster. And that's the end of this chapter. If you skipped over that section, then I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, then my condolences. Anyway, I'd like to invite you to join the Discord, which is linked down in the description below.
that being said, I hope you have a nice rest of your day, night, or whatever it is for you. Just enjoy your time. And I will see you tomorrow.